Hello, Great Minds. I'm glad to be with you once again today. Hope you're doing awesome and having a very, 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 very blessed day. Well, I hope you're practicing. You know, I would always ask, this is a constant question. Are you practicing? If you want to improve, if you want to grow musically, you need to practice and make sure you practice right and practice hard. God bless you. Yes, today I'm here to present to you yet another discourse of uh, BGM. And I'm glad to present it to you. Today I'll be talking or talking about um, using the components of chords as fuels. Now, this is one topic so many people shy about or get shy about or try to avoid let me let me let me put it that way but i tell you this is one of the most resourceful aspects of building fields on on the bass guitar many times we are lost in picking stuff out of the blues i mean we try to pick a lot of stuff out of from out of yeah same music but we pick random stuff around forgetting the fact and the truth that right within the chord itself there are actually elements and components that are very useful as fields so today i'll be breaking down it's not going to be a very long video it's just a short and brief video but i'm very very sure it's going to be an impactful video for you so like I taught you a while back on chords and the positioning of chords and all that, the inversions um, and all that, there are actually ways you can pick the components and apply them as fields within the survival time. I know I've talked about survival time. So within the survival time of that chord, you can actually apply those components of the chord as fields. But now the truth is sometimes, okay, we have a chord, uh, we have... Um, Let's see C major 7th. We have C major 7th. Sorry, I'm trying to balance my frequency a bit. And we have the song like, um, let me see. Do you are Alpha and Omega. Now, it might look like, okay, is it, is it not just to play? Is, is it just to sound the notes of the chord? No, yes, that could be one of the ways to express as feels. But don't you think sometimes it could be really, really boring to just apply, I mean, you just use the exact notes without adding any dynamism to it, no dynamics, no patterns, no arpeggiating, arpeggiated patterns, nothing. You just apply them straightforward. Not wrong, like I said, not bad, but it could sound more engaging. You could make it livelier and sweeter. And how can you make it, make it lively and sweeter? Number one, playing them on octaves. So I have this. So you are Alpha. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. So before we go to we give you all, you are worthy to be. Now you see the way I applied it. I picked the components of the C major seventh chord. And what I did was I played over an octave. Now, the components I'm using here is my Do, Mi, So, T. So, those are the components. I'm now picking these components and using them as a field or as fields. So, what I had was you are worthy to be praised. You know, we have an upbeat there. I hope you picked that well. Let me play it again. You are worthy to be free. So you can see how I applied it. You might not use the exact timing I used, but what I simply did was I tried to make sure that I sounded every note that was in the composition or the components of the chord. So the components of the chord, like I said, an inversion of it will be this. 
So I made sure I sounded every note, but now I played them on octaves. So, on, or yeah, I played them on octaves, more than one octave. So one way you can apply the components of the chord is to play those components, not just in its raw form, but play them in octaves. Play them in octaves. That way you have enough to play within the survival time of the notes. Don't forget the survival time is the time within which that chord counts before you move to another chord. That's the survival time of the chord. So within the survival time of the chord, you basically pick the components of the chord, play them over octaves, and make sure that you don't miss out within the survival time before you now move to the before the next chord please i hope you understand that before the next chord please you play your feel play the components of the chord as feels over an octave so that's one I'm sweating a bit here so let me wipe my sweat if you want to buy the sweat i'll sell it to <laughs> don't mind me so secondly another thing you can do is to play patterns over the chords now, when I say patterns over the chord, I mean patterns over the components of the chord. Now, using this same chord, I'm going to use only one chord, and I will expect, and I will expect you to um, try it out on other chords. If your pianist is there with you, try, tell the pianist to play. Ask the pianist for the components of the chord. Make sure you ask the pianist for the components of the chord that he's playing, then pick out those chords, or pick out the components, sorry, and play them in an octave. And the second one I'm saying now is play in patterns. So what I'll do is, I could do pattern of, um, um, pattern of two. Because if I play on pattern of one on the same chord, I have this. If I play on pattern of one, this is what I will have. Sorry. Which is not bad too in its raw form. Sincerely, this is not bad at all because I could actually descend and ascend within the survival time of that progression of the chord. Sorry, not the progression, the chord itself. And uh, now, if I want to play on pattern of two, what I will have is you are worthy to be praised. So here, praise, sorry, not pray. Here I have. So that's pattern of two. Do, do, I'm sounding every note twice. But I can now go pattern of three on the same thing I just played. So I could go. Do. I could use that as my feel also. Sorry, I'm not playing with a metronome, so I'm just trying to break every note. So irrespective of the, of the timing, in which I play, there are several other punctuations within this timing that you can make use of. You mustn't play it exactly the way I played it. You understand? So, what I did was, and I can make it pattern of fours. Yeah, I can make it pattern of four. That's pattern four. So, I could have... So, now, what I simply did was, I played over on patterns, and I also played over, um, sorry, I played over octave too. So I played more than one octave here. So basically what I did was I tried to stress every note, even if I make use of one octave. With respect to what I played, it will make sense. But now I make sure I stressed every note with respect to patterns and with respect to octave too. So whatever chord you have, Make sure that you find out the components of the chord from whoever you're playing with, it might be the pianist or the guitarist, and you can use the exact components of those chords as your feel. And make sure when you're playing the chords or the components of the chords as your feel, either on the octave pattern or on the, on the octave mode, let me put it that way, not pattern, so there won't be a repetition, either on the octave mode or on the pattern mode, make sure that you use a metronome and play it the way you ought to. Okay, if you pattern of twos, you need to play. Play pattern of twos. If pattern of one, one is just simply striking every note once and moving down. Pattern of three, three notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, that's do. Um, uh, for example, I'm playing my major C major. Do, mi, so, 
Me so do, so do me. So that's pattern. I'm picking out and I'm playing them in threes. So make sure you ask. Very importantly, ask your pianist, what are the components of your chord? Like if you have time to practice before your main performance, always ask. So you don't play nonsense eventually. God bless you. I hope this is clear enough. Try this on several other chords. Try this. Make sure you try it on several chords and you will do just great. God bless you. Have a blessed day.